Horrors and gents, welcome to CG Reaction, and this is What Do Alien Civilization Look Like? The Cardassive Scale. Yeah, this is by the channel Kuz Gazar in a nutshell. Cardassive Scale is that thing, right? There are three levels or something that tells you which type of civilization you are. Basically, it's somewhat like if you can harness an energy from your planet, you're type 1. If you can uh, har harness energy from your solar system, like your star, you're type 2. And if you can harness energy from your entire galaxy, you're type 3. I think that's the basic way of thinking that. I don't know much about this, so this is going to be a fun video. I wrote quite a few guys because that video already. If you haven't seen them, check out the uh, card. There's a playlist I wrote it for it. Check out the link in the description with all of my videos. And yeah, that's what this one. The observable universe is a big place that's been around for more than 13 billion years. Up to 2 trillion galaxies made up of something like 20,000 billion billion stars surround our home galaxy. In the Milky Way alone, scientists assume there are some 40 billion Earth-like planets in the habitable zone of their stars. When we look at these numbers, it's hard to imagine that there is nobody else out there. It would change our perception of ourselves forever if we found others. Just knowing that this vast place is not dead would shift our perspective outwards and could help us get over our irrelevant quarrels. But before looking for our new best friends or worst enemies, we have a problem to solve. What are we actually looking for? In a universe that... I think it's don't talk about the star. There's a star that dims abnormally. People think that there's a Dyson sphere around it. Uh, it's a ridiculous thing, but you know, it's really exciting. What if one day we find out there is an actual Dyson sphere around that star? Actually, that would be exciting and scary, which means there's a civilization that is much advanced than us who can create a Dyson sphere like that. Big and old, we have to assume that civilizations start millions of years apart from each other and develop in different directions and speeds. So, not only are we looking over distances of dozens to hundreds of thousands of light years, we're looking for a civilization ranging from cavemen to super advanced. So, we need a conceptual framework to enable us to think better thoughts that make us able to search better. Are there universal rules that intelligent species follow? Currently, our civilization sample size is only one, so we may make incorrect assumptions based solely on ourselves. Still, better than nothing. We know that humans started out with nothing but minds and hands that could build tools. We know that humans are curious, competitive, greedy for resources, and expansionist. The more of these qualities our ancestors had, the more successful they were in the civilization building game. Being one with nature is nice, but it's not the... Yeah, most of what makes us human, all of our traits basically is, uh, comes from survival of the fittest mentality of the past survival instincts so we needed all this kind of mentality like you know hoarding resources you know being power hungry so you would survive that's how we were in the past path to irrigation systems or gunpowder or cities so it's reasonable to assume that aliens able to take over their home planet also have these qualities. Yeah. And if aliens have to follow the same laws of physics, then there is a measurable metric for progress, energy use. Human progress can be measured very precisely by how much energy we extracted from our environment and how we made it usable to do things. We started with muscles until we learned to control fire. Then we made machines that used kinetic energy from water and wind. As our machines got better and our knowledge of materials expanded, we began to harness the concentrated energy from dead plants we dug up from the ground. As our energy consumption grew exponentially, so did the abilities of our civilization. Between 1800 and 2015, population size had increased sevenfold while humanity was consuming 25 times more energy. It's likely that this process will continue into the far future. Based on these facts, scientist Nikolai Kardashev developed a method of categorizing civilizations from cave dwellers to gods ruling over galaxies. The Kardashev Scale, a method of ranking civilizations by their energy use. 
The scale has been refined and expanded on over the decades, but in general, it puts civilizations into four different categories. Four categories. A Type 1 civilization is able to use the available energy of their home planet. A Type 2 civilization is able to use the available energy of their star and planetary system. A Type 3 civilization is able to use the available energy of their galaxy. Yeah, what's A Type, type 4? 4 civilization is able to use the available energy of multiple galaxies. Ah. These levels differ by orders of magnitude. It's like comparing an ant colony to a human metropolitan area. Yeah. To ants, we are so complex and powerful, we might as well be gods. So to make the scale more useful, we need subcategories. On the lower end, Ants don't think of us as gods, because when ants come close to either they'll bite us or just avoid us. They are, there's that idiot. ...of the spectrum, there are type 0 to type 1 civilizations. Anything from hunter-gatherers to something we could achieve in the next few hundred years. These might actually be abundant in the Milky Way. But a civilization that is not actively transmitting radio signals into space might be as close as our nearest stellar neighbor, the Alpha Centauri system, and we would have no way of realizing they exist. Yeah. I mean, we started sending uh, radio signals in past two or so centuries, right? Uh, so, you know, basically, like, you know, if there is a civilization who's at, like, Roman times, 2,000 years ago, you know, Roman time. So if there's a civilization who has Roman type of civilization, obviously they're not sending radio waves. Then again, the you know, uh, comparing the you know age of the universe, age of the our galaxy, uh, that's you know between Roman times to what we are right now is very small. So, but yeah, we could be at the perfect time where you know our closest star might have a civilization that is going through what we were going through two thousand years ago. So it could be that. But even if they transmitted radio signals like we do, it might not be very helpful. On an interstellar scale, humanity is practically invisible. Our signals may extend over an impressive 200 light years, but this is only a tiny fraction of the Milky Way. And even if someone were listening, after a few light years, our signals decay into noise, impossible to identify as the source of an intelligent species. Today, humanity ranks at about level 0.75. We have altered our planet. We've created huge structures, mined and stripped mountains, removed rainforests and drained swamps. We've created rivers and lakes and changed the composition and temperature of the atmosphere. If progress continues and we don't make Earth uninhabitable, we will become a full Type 1 civilization in the next few hundred years. Any civilization Hold that up, become... the Type 1 civilization means that we can harness energy from our planet. We are already doing that, right? I think we we are using all the ways to harness energy from the planet. So how are we not type 1? What is making us only 0.75? The type 1 is bound to look outside because it's likely that it's still curious, competitive, greedy and expansionist. The next reasonable step towards transitioning to type 2 is trying to alter and mine other planets and bodies. This might start with outposts in space, transition to infrastructure and industries near the home planet, move on to colonies, and end with terraforming other planets by changing their atmosphere, their rotation or position. As a civilization expands and uses more and more stuff and space, its energy consumption scales with them. So at some point, they may embark on the largest project a lower type 2 civilization can take on, harnessing the energy of their star by building a Dyson Swarm. Swamp. Once this megastructure is finished, energy has become practically unlimited for molding the home system however they see fit. I think this difference between Dyson Swarm and Dyson Sphere. Sphere is an entire structure that encompasses the sun. Swarm is just, you know, mini things floating around the sun, in, in swarming around the sun to harness the energy. I think Dyson Swarm feels like more of a practical way. If a Dyson Sphere, if you create that, there will be certain areas of the solar system, if not the entire solar system, who would stop receiving the, you know, the, the light, basically. Because, you know, Dyson Sphere is blocking it. Swarm feels like more of a, you know, better way. Yes. If they are still curious, competitive, greedy and expansionist and now have complete control over their home system, stellar infrastructure in place and the energy output of a star, the next frontier moves to other stars light years away. 
For a Type II civilization, the distance to other stars might feel like the distance between Earth and Pluto does to us today. Technically within reach, but only with immense investments in terms of time, ingenuity and resources. Stellar engine. This begins their transition towards Type III. This step is so far beyond us that it becomes hard to imagine what exactly these challenges will look like and how they'll be solved. Will they be able to find a solution to the vast distances and travel times of hundreds or thousands of years? Will they be able to communicate and keep a shared culture and biology between colonies light years apart? Or will they split into separate Type II civilizations? Maybe even different species? Are there deadly challenges between the stars? So the closer a species gets to Type 3, the harder it becomes to fathom what it might actually look like. Yeah. They might discover new physics, may understand and control dark matter and energy, or be able to travel faster than light. We might be unable to... I think, uh, you know, quantum physics and in turn uh, dark matter, dark energy, if we understand all that, uh, if we could be, you know, we could understand the physics and science completely differently than we are understanding right now. Not completely, uh, it would be really different than how we recognize it today. Obviously, all the things that we know today, it's not going to be proven false later on. There'll be a decent to it, but you know, it could be completely different than we can't even imagine. So yeah, when it comes to type three, you know, it's, you know, the details get dispersed so much that we can't predict what it's going to be. I'm pretty sure it's going to be long, long time before we reach that, thousands of years, I guess. Grasp their motives, technology, and actions. Humans are the ants, trying to understand the galactic metropolitan area. A high Type II civilization might already consider humanity too primitive to even talk to. Yeah, In type three that's the thing that Neil deGrasse Tyson says a lot, and it's kind of, first time I heard it, I'm like, God damn, that could be true. Like if an extremely high intelligent species comes and see what we are doing, it, it might seem very primitive to them, like how we see monkeys and chimpanzees. So, you know, they could just say, like, hmm, that is no intelligent being here, let's just move on, it might just, you know, pass us by. That would be so effed up, man. Civilization might feel about as like we feel about the bacteria living on the anthill. Yeah. Maybe they wouldn't even consider us conscious or our survival relevant. Yeah. We could only. He also says that. I mean, do you stop and talk to a, a bug on the road? No. Then why would these aliens come and talk to us if we might look like same to them as a bug looks to us? I guess. That's just effed up. The aliens come and say, hmm, these are just primitive morons. There is no intelligent being here. Let's just move on. Why would I talk to these morons? Pray that they're nice gods. But the scale doesn't necessarily end here. Some scientists suggest there might be Type 4 and Type 5 civilizations whose influence stretches over galaxy clusters or superclusters, structures comprising thousands of galaxies and trillions of stars. Ultimately, there might be a type of Omega civilization, able to manipulate the entire universe and possibly others. Type oh, Omega civilizations might be the actual creators of our universe for reasons beyond. Okay, can control multi versus multi universes. I, I don't believe that because I feel like laws of physics are so complex and so specific that if anything from one universe go from go to some other universe. You know, just loss of physics might be even if they're even slightly changed, we might explode and hundred different things could happen. So I don't think, you know, even if we find out there are multi multi universes, I don't think we can travel between them. So I don't know how, you know, yeah, how good way to think that is like multi controlling multiple universes. I don't think anyone can do that because our universe might be the boundary which we are bounded by. Like we can't go outside of that even if we know something's outside our comprehension. Maybe they were just bored. As flawed as this classification may be, this thought experiment is already telling us interesting things. Yeah, it's... If our ideas about the nature of species that form interstellar civilizations is sort of correct, then we can be pretty sure that there are no civilizations of Type 3 and beyond near the Milky Way. Their influence would in all likelihood be so all-encompassing and their technology so far above our own that we couldn't miss them. The galaxy should flash with but what about that star i mean i know scientists basically in the end after pressuring a lot they just came up with like there's a massive dust cloud around it that is causing the dip in the you know intensity of the light 
But I feel like that was one of the cop-out answer they gave because everybody was pushing them like, what is it? What is it? Because that star is promising. I don't know the name of the star, but it constantly, you know, dips the light and immediately gets brighter. No, no scientific method can tell what that is. So people, you know, the scientists came up with like, there may be dust cloud around it that is causing that. I don't know. With their activity in thousands of star systems. We should be able to see or detect their artifacts or movements between different parts of their empire. Even if a Type 3 civilization did exist in the past and died a mysterious death, we should be able to detect some of the remnants of their yeah. empire. But when scientists looked, they didn't find remnants of harvested stars, decaying megastructures, or scars of great interstellar wars. So they're very likely not out there and never were. In a sense, this is very sad, but also very reassuring. It leaves the galaxy to us and others similar to us. Yeah. So the most promising civilizations to look for may be somewhere in the spectrum from type 1.5 to type 2.5. They wouldn't be too advanced to understand them and their motives. They may have finished their first... Yeah, but this implies that we know every place of our galaxy. That's not true. I mean, we could look at specific areas, but we haven't mapped our entire galaxy every place in detail. So we might have missed some areas where there might be a civilization like that who's, who created Dyson spheres and things like that. Type 3 civilization that, you know, controls the galaxy. Maybe they're hiding deliberately. Who the hell knows? I don't know, man. First megastructures, and they might be in the process of moving stuff between stars and transmitting enormous amounts of information into space by accident or on purpose. They would probably also look to the stars and look for others. Then again, maybe we've got it all wrong. Maybe progress to type 2 does not mean expanding outwards and humanity is still too immature to imagine otherwise. For now, all we really know is that we haven't seen anybody yet. But we've only just started looking. Until we finally find friendly super aliens and can ask them to explain the rules of the universe to us, most of us have to make do with learning stuff ourselves. Whether you're going back to school, leaving home for the first time, or if you're just entering a new phase in your life, our shop is stocked and ready for all your... Yeah, so yeah, a card is of scale. It might feel simplistic, but yeah, it is a... Sometimes, you know, simple answer is the right answer. So this is a good way of thinking, like, what could be there? So Cardas of scale makes sense at certain level. But yeah, type 3 civilization, the civilization that control the galaxy. If they exist, maybe they're hiding from us. Or maybe, you know, we can't detect them somehow. Because let's be honest, uh, you know, th there are lots of things that puzzles us. Like I said, the star that is constantly dipping and brightening up, that could be something. And we haven't mapped our entire galaxy. I mean, we have seen some pockets of it. For, you know, focused on that. But lots of areas we haven't seen. So I don't know. It could be anything. Who the hell knows? All right, people. If you like my Alexander Fortnite, subscribe. Check out the Alexander. This link in the description. Check out the cast for the playlist. Check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.